Hey everybody, I wanted to show you a um, activity you can try, maybe fun, I don't know. You can try in your house. Uh, it's a, uh, you take a piece of paper and you see how many times you can fold it in half. Two, so far so good. At this point I probably can say, I don't know, how many times do you think I can fold it in half? That's three, four, five, six is how far, how many times I can fold this in half. Actually, the world record for folding a piece of paper in half is 12. I, mean, this, uh, I think the lady had uh, an enormous piece of paper. She was able to fold it. You probably already noticed if you did it at home that the, the folded up piece of paper, of course, is thicker now than the original sheet of paper. Imagine, now I'm not physically able to do this, but if you were able to fold it more and more and more 25 times. If I were to fold this paper upon itself, how thick would the piece of paper be? 25 is not that big a number. Just imagine, say it out loud, how, how thick you think it would be. This piece of paper would be as thick as the Titanic is long. How thick would this piece of paper be if I folded it upon itself 50 times? 50 times doesn't seem that much. How, how, how much do you think? Say it out loud. How, how, how thick would this piece of paper be if I folded it upon itself 50 times? Well, the answer is the thickness of this piece of paper would reach from here to the sun. Now, why, how, why in the world is it doing that? Well, it's because every time you fold the piece of paper, you're doubling the previous total, right? And now it's twice as thick as, as one piece of paper. Now it's four times as thick as the original piece of paper. Now it's eight times as thick as the original piece of paper. Now it's 16 times as thick as the original piece of paper. Now it's 32 times as thick as the original piece of paper. It's 64 times as thick as the original piece of paper. I'm showing you this because if I folded this paper, piece of paper upon itself 50 times, you know, your gut feeling is not going to tell you that it's going to reach from here to the sun, but it does. Uh, this new COVID-19 virus uh, has the potential for exponential growth to double upon itself. But you might be pushing back now, doesn't the uh, normal flu virus, you know, contract itself when if I get, a, if I get the flu, don't I pass it along to another person and the both of us pass it along to another person doesn't that normally happen and if not why not we all enjoy the benefit of what's called herd immunity if i get the flu the likelihood that i'll for sure pass it on to someone else is is relatively low because uh, i might be interacting with someone who had had the flu from last year or the year before etc the normal strains of flu that, that uh, we go through every year don't have this reliable doubling upon itself. I want to make it clear that this 
very simple and crude uh, illustration is not perfectly analogous to, to uh, the situation with the uh, coronavirus. It, is, it doesn't duplicate itself in each cycle reliably the same way it does, but it does have this potential for an exponential growth that we need to keep in mind, and uh, exponential growth defies our intuition. This is an entirely new virus that has the potential for that exponential growth. And those two people would reliably pass it on to four people, and those four people could reliably pass it on to eight people, and those rely eight, and so on, etc. Until, until there's this, if you were to graph it out, there's this sharp spike eventually that occurs. And our intuitions don't tell us that that would, that that would likely happen. The reason why uh, that exponential growth doesn't happen with the normal flu is because it flattens out because of measures we take. If we get sick, we usually stay home. And if we do interact with someone, it's not reliably passing itself on to everyone who would otherwise pass it on to someone else. Uh, the COVID-19 is entirely different. It is not the normal flu strain because of this reason. I'm making this video in part because I'm, I hear some people dismissing the uh, potential impact of this virus because they might point out that only people who are 80 or above might die from it. A goodly number of uh, people that have recovered from it. A small fraction of people in Harris County and, uh, and Fort Bend County have uh, gotten it. It's an infinitesimal. And we don't freak out when the normal flu happens and the flu has already killed uh, a, a larger, a much larger number of people. The normal flu strain does not have this potential to duplicate itself reliably in our population like this new virus does. Now, how should you respond to this? this? First of all, don't freak out. Because each cycle of passing on has the potential to grow exponentially, this is an opportunity for you to slow the inevitable exponential growth with a very small action. And it is just stay at home. Don't interact with people and wash your hands. A small action like staying away from others will be a, an enormous uh, help to your community. It will head off the inevitable uh, peak of uh, the number of people that will get it to, uh, to be a manageable number. So I'd say don't just react uh, to this virus uh, out of self-preservation, but rather do your community a service by staying at home. You know, your intuition may not map on to the full reality of what's happening. Go up in the backyard and use a leaf.